Actually, make it five rows because you have a heading up now. Okay? So we're going to use these four rows here. Our heading at the top is going to be velocity, acceleration, and then the word motion. This is a really good table to help you, especially when you're studying. It'll help you organize your notes and your ideas here. So, let's say, for instance, we have a positive velocity. So positive means going to the right. 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 And you have a positive, it speaks very good. And you have a positive yes. acceleration also. So you have an object traveling to the right with an acceleration also to the right. Is the object going to speed up or slow down? Speed up. Yeah. Speed up. Again, yeah. you're going this way, and your acceleration is also pushing you this way. Therefore, you will speed up. OK? Now let's say. We have positive velocity, but a negative acceleration. What happens there? Slow down. It's like you're going this way with velocity, OK? And then you suddenly hit the brakes. Whenever you hit the brakes on your car, think of it as a negative acceleration or acceleration. So this would be slow down. OK? Next. Now, you're in your car, and you're going in reverse. So your velocity is negative. Your velocity is negative. And your acceleration happens to also be in that direction, negative. So you're going this way, and your acceleration is pushing, pushing you this way. What's going to happen? Speed up. It's going to speed up, but in a negative direction there. And that's the key part of it. So let's put speed up. And I'm going to put to the left. Okay, to the left. Just to note that we are speeding up, theoretically, but we're speeding up in the reverse direction. Next, if we have a negative velocity, but a positive acceleration. So I'm going this way, but acceleration is pushing me this way. So uh, you're neutral. Not neutral. You are slowing down. Jeff, explain that to us. This way, so I'm going to do a four, three, two, one, zero until so I get like neutral. Now so it's like breaking. It's like you're going in reverse and hitting the brake. Okay. Imagine you're coasting in reverse and you start to hit the brake. The brake then acts as an accelerator because it stops you from going backwards. Again, you're coasting backwards, and eventually what happens is you start to go this way. Not 
matter where you are, close. Uh -huh. Come out so here. Yeah, you're staying at a constant speed. Oh, so here oh, we're going to put oh, constant oh, speed. Negative or positive. Again. No, OR, OR. No, that, that's like zero. 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 Oh, that's Sorry, zero. Let's put. Jack, can you like pay attention? There we go. Again. You have an example. You're not hitting the accelerator. Okay, you're not hitting the accelerator. It's the example of cruise control from that event. When you turn your cruise control on, you're not accelerating or decelerating. You're moving at a constant rate. Okay, you're flowing. You're not decelerating or accelerating. Next. If you start from rest, okay, if you start from rest, and your acceleration is either negative or positive, either one. So you're at rest. This is not a new one. This is not a new one. I'm grouping these together for a reason. Yeah. So you're at rest. You don't have any velocity. And suddenly you have acceleration. What does that cause you to do? What does it cause you to do, Max? Yeah, just go in general. Forward or back, depending on which way. But again, if you're at rest, think about it logically for a second. You must have acceleration to move. The only way you can have any sort of change in your velocity is due to acceleration. So if your car is stationary, the only way it'll start moving is to hit the accelerator. Even when you turn the car on and put it into drive, you know how you start to roll forward a little bit? If you take your foot off the brake, you're accelerating right there. Because to go from zero miles per hour, even to one mile per hour, you're changing your speed or changing your velocity. Whenever there's a change in velocity, you have some sort of acceleration. Okay, you have some sort of acceleration. So here, we're just going to say in general, speeding up from rest in either direction. Again, if you're at rest and suddenly you have some sort of acceleration, that will cause you to speed up. Okay, and finally, everybody should know this one. Say so you have no velocity and no acceleration. Now what are you doing? Yeah, you're still. Okay? You're remaining at rest, we'll say. Okay? You're remaining at rest. So again, think logically now, and this is what I think about. If your velocity and your acceleration are in the same direction. So if they're both positive, or if they're both negative, you speed up. See that? Again, if the velocity and the acceleration are both positive, or if they're both negative, you speed up either way. Whenever your velocity and acceleration are opposing, so here we had a positive, then a negative, here we had a negative, then a positive, you are slowing down. So whenever velocity and acceleration act in opposite directions, you're slowing down. Whenever they act together, they're speeding up. Okay? Whenever they act together, you're speeding up. Any questions on this? We're going to go off to some examples in a minute. Now, this is where we're going to get into a little bit of heavier math. Okay? Just give you a little preview. Everybody ready to go? All right. First, we are going to use three equations here. Now, Anybody know what it means to derive an equation? Derive. Derive. Paul. To get from. Get from? From where, though, Paul? Like, Say again? Yeah, very, very good, Paul. You're taking, like, some theory, and you're coming up with where it comes from. You're deriving it. Now, it, for the first example, I'm going to derive the formula. I'm going to show you where it comes from. For the second two formulas, I'm just going to give you the formulas. Okay? Again, you don't have to memorize them, but you write them in your notes, so when you do your homework, you have them written down. But on the test, I'll provide them. Okay? Just a little like side note. The, the real difference between classes that are like AP level physics classes or honors level physics classes is a lot of the time, you go through a lot of the derivation, you go through a lot of the etymology, meaning like the meaning of it, or the, the, the meaning of the words you're using. Whereas here, a lot of the time, I'm just going to give you the equations for now, just because it does take a while to go through all the derivation of it. I can show you. I'm happy to show you. You can always look it up. Okay, so if you're interested in that, don't feel like you can't look at it, but I'm just giving you a little reason why. So derivation, I'll show you. I'm going to derive the first one, and I'll show you what I mean. So yesterday, we talked about this formula. So start by writing it down, please. 
Okay, or could be a zero rather. Sorry, last class. We talked about this formula. Acceleration equals delta v over delta t. The change in velocity over your change in time. Okay, this is the formula we started with. It was section 2.2. Now, instead of continuing here, what I want to do is this. Write this as the following. So we're going to ask Vf minus Vi all over delta t. Because remember, delta means change. So you're looking at your final velocity minus your initial velocity. Again, delta means change, change, change. So we're going to just keep looking for the displacement. Yeah, isn't that displacement? Where are you getting displacement? Vf minus Vi. I mean, they're confused. Displacement is x. That's the number delta x. Displacement equals 
initial velocity times the time period plus one half times the acceleration times the time period squared. That's one of your equations. The next one, the final velocity of the object squared equals the initial velocity of the object squared plus two times the acceleration times the displacement under God. Okay, I'm just literally reading through the definitions here. Yeah. That's a very good question, Jeff. He said, wouldn't you want to solve for your variable in the simplest form, thus taking a square root, right? Now, the reason it's left squared, first, is derived that way. It's one of the major reasons we didn't do, but just so you know that. Secondly, when you take a square root, like, for example, the square root of 25, what's the answer? Five. 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 Negative. Or negative. Or, oh. or, what was it? Or negative. 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 They leave the square here because when we use this equation later, you're going to see that you're always going to get two answers. And based on the scenario, you have to choose correctly. You're not going to necessarily know. For example, an object is falling, okay, downward. Downward for velocity is negative. So if you found the final velocity of this pen right before it hit my hand, right before it hit my hand, the final velocity would be a negative quantity. And if you solve it using this equation, you need to remember that we take the square root of plus or minus. Okay? So it is helpful. Now, if you wanted to, you could say, you could say vf equals plus or minus square root of vi squared plus 2 a x. That's fine. You can definitely do that. Okay? Good question. Can I just get a picture? <laughs> now, let's go on to an example. And what I want you guys to do from this point on, you're going to need to constantly reference these formulas. So have these available to you. Okay, so if it's on the next page, have the formulas ready to go. Or if it's below that, you're ready to go again. But these are going to be our three kinematic equations. The first two up here that we started with are also useful. Okay, but for this topic, for acceleration, we're going to really be looking at these three. Okay, remember, this equation right here that I'm about to point to is really another variation of this equation right here. So if you want to use the top one or this one, it really doesn't matter. This one is easier to use though. Okay, because it breaks down the VF and the VI signs. All right, let's take a look at an example. Let's take a look at an example. All right? I'm going to dictate. You might want to write it. Okay, so when you study, you have the words written down. And the examples, I have three examples for this topic. They're very complex. They're not easy examples. Okay? Give you a little warning. <laughs> so, we have a race car. Yes. Reaches a speed of 42 meters per second. Okay. A race car reaches a speed of 42 meters per second. Period. It then begins a uniform, uniform means constant, a uniform negative acceleration. Again, then begins a uniform negative acceleration. So A is going to be negative, we're going to go. Using a parachute and the braking system on the car, it comes to rest in five and a half seconds. So again, the race car reaches a speed of 42 meters per second. It begins to undergo a uniform negative acceleration using a parachute and the braking system, which kind of doesn't matter for the problem, and comes to rest in five and a half seconds. Find the distance that the car traveled while it was braking. Five and a half seconds. Find the distance that the car travels during the braking period. And this is a very logical problem, okay? Because think about it. If you are some sort of forensic scientist and you need to look at tread marks or skid marks, based on the length of the skid marks, you can easily determine the speed the person was driving before that. So if they're like, oh, I wasn't speeding, I wasn't speeding, it wasn't my fault. Yeah, yeah. There are very easy ways to prove that something actually was speeding based on the length of the tread marks, based on the time when they started breaking the actual collision itself. There's easy ways to actually do this. Jeff. Um, what if you a truck driver and he don't know if somebody uh -huh. 
How would they be able to sell your say? Um, well, that would be a little bit tougher because the fact that there's no evidence there, but the evidence is, is blown out a lot. You mean physically, though, right? Yeah, but it really, it really spit off. System, like, oh God, is the timing off? Like, how much time was there between a red and a green in each direction? Is it kind of impossible to not stop like, like, the little linear reactions of it? You get some light or get some basic kind of possible. Whoa. Unless you want to get some. Yeah, yeah. unless you're meaning to do it, sure. Yeah, yeah. They're naturally going to break. Even if, even if, yeah, somebody is, I guess, drinking and driving, which is the worst thing ever. We'll never do it. Seriously. Yeah, I have so many friends that have gotten real screwed up from drinking and driving. Sounds terrible, it's true. All right, so with this, <laughs> not anymore. You didn't friends, that, nuts. friends that I knew in high school. I just drive illegally. <laughs> well, that's even better. Yeah. Yeah, I got in this problem, in this problem, I want you to identify the things that we know. So somebody tell me something that we know about the problem. Max. Good. Now, Max. That's a velocity, but we have to indicate, is that VI or VF, Max? Uh, and think before you answer. Let Max think for a second. Please, that's the VI. How come, Max? says, a race car reaches a speed of 42 miles meters per second. So they think that the person sped up to there, and they'll call that the VF. You see the miscommunication there, because it reached that speed. But with our problem, we need to think logically in our mind. Time equals zero. When was the beginning of time for this problem? That's when he starts to hit the brake. And his velocity, at that point in time, is 42 meters per second. OK, that's like the beginning of time. Now. What is his or her final velocity, yeah. Jeff? Um, I, stand, I stand for initial and F stands for next. Final, yep. What's his final velocity? Um, five, five, um, zero. Why is it zero? I'm going to hear zero. He's at rest. Yeah, he's got brake to come to rest, right? It says find the distance the car travels during braking. Before that, it said he comes to rest in 5.5 seconds. So VF is zero. OK? Uh, redeem yourself, Jack. What's 5.5 stand for, really? Um, What's 5.5 in this problem? Second. So what does that consider? What value? Uh, time. Good. Okay. Again. Say it. It's not negative. Let's explain this. That's a really good question. Time itself is always positive, but here's why. If you look at the formula for this problem, we're going to do VF is going to be a number on the right side, the zero. Okay? We're going to have that squared, that quantity. We're going to have this quantity squared on the other side. The acceleration is negative. So it's going to take into account for that already. So let's go ahead and take a look. What was our acceleration? Or sorry, let me say what our acceleration is problem is. So let's find our acceleration first. How can I find my acceleration knowing these three quantities? Which of those three can I jet formulas will I use? Good, and what did we, we, we have further with that? Remember, we made that into another equation. What was oh, it? yeah, VF equals VI. And we just called this AT, right? Is that what we said when we, when we yeah, yeah. simplified it? All right, why am I using this formula? Somebody explain it to us. If I want to find acceleration, why did I choose this specific formula? Jack. They're trying to find the difference. Uh, Jack, let me summarize what you said. We have initial, we have final velocity, we have time. What's the only thing missing in this equation then? What, look at the, look at the equation. What variable is left over? Okay, let me go through this, because some of you got it and some didn't. I want to make sure we're clear. We have VF, right? We got that. We've got VI. We've got T. So if we know those three numbers, algebraically speaking,
speaking, we only have one variable left, a. So we can solve for that acceleration. Now, remember what the question asked us to start this problem. It said, find, find the distance traveled while breaking, which is x, correct? x. Yeah. Now, the other formula we could have used to find x right away is this. Take a look. Vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ax. But the problem is, to use this formula, to use this formula, what's it? In order to use this one here, we need to know the value of a. Because again, we know vf, we know vi, we really want to find x in the end. That's the distance traveled. Okay, we want to find x. Focus up here. We want to find x. If we can figure out a first, we can plug it in here to then find x. Let's go ahead and do that in this formula. So, I've got. Wait, what? We are trying to find x, but to get x, we need a. The other formula is a also. Look at it. Is there a in that formula? Yeah. Wait, then why don't we just do it first? Bottom velocity plus initial velocity. And that's what I want. I was going to get to that. Very good. And I was going to say, we can use one of our kinematics to go back to the a formula also. And that's what we're going to do now. I want to show you. If we were to resolve this for a, we would subtract vi from both sides and then divide by t. And what Jeff is saying is, well, didn't we have this formula earlier when we were in the middle of going through all the steps? At one point in time, we had this formula, okay? Which is just this formula solved for a. Again, subtract vi from both sides means move it over. Then this t is multiplying by a. So then divide by t on both sides, that's where this comes from. So we're going to use this formula just because it's one of our three kinematics, but really we're going back to this one. vf minus vi is going to be 0. Minus vi. What is vi? 42. So we've got 0 minus 42. And here's what I'm going to do. Put them in parentheses and put your units outside so you don't have to hold your units twice. Make it easier on you. Okay, now, once I know that, I plug in my time. My time is what again? 5.5. 5. Now, the question earlier was is the time considered negative? The reason it's not negative, or it's a little more obvious now, is watch. 0 minus 42 is negative, right? Yeah. And this is going to be a negative divided by positive. So this will give me a negative acceleration of 7.63 meters per second squared. Well, that makes sense. Why is it going to be a negative acceleration? What is the car doing? It's accelerating, it's accelerating or it's braking, right? Yeah. So we have to have a negative. I'm going to make it a little better. So we've got to have that negative there in blue. OK? How do I know what my units are? Either an A, you memorize, and you know that acceleration is always meters per second squared. Or, take a look, meters per second, and then there's another per second. So meters per second per second is meters per second squared. That's my acceleration, but that's not my goal. What's my goal? What do I want to find? Distance traveled while breaking. So let's go to this formula here now, or, or we can go back to our other formula with x equals. Which formula is easier? Let me ask you guys. Here. Which of the two formulas would you prefer to use at this point? The top one. The bottom one. The bottom, I heard again. Wait, could you solve? What would x look like? I mean, what would the top formula look like if you build? You solve for x up here? Yeah, that would be x, if you saw it's 2x. So that's easier. That's the solution for x if you solve up here generically. This is the solution for x if you use this equation. Okay? It doesn't matter in a sense, but it's up to you to decide now, okay? Again, personally speaking, personally, I don't mind solving for x. I would probably use this one because I know I have a, a zero quantity here, so the zero kind of just drops off, right? Makes it a little bit easier. Here, I have to square my time, multiply by my time by my initial velocity, which is 42, have the accelerator. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same answer. Okay? So why don't we do this? Let's split the room in half. Okay? Down the middle right here. So this is half the room. This is half the room. Use this formula here. Plug in your VI to 42. Your time for 5.5. Your acceleration as negative, negative 7.63. 
and your time as 5.5 squared. That's this side. On this side of the room, use this formula here. Vf, plug in a zero. For Vi, plug in your 42 meters per second. Make sure you square it. All over 2 times the acceleration we just got. Okay? So again, what is t? t is 5.5 in my time period. Okay? So this hand, use x equals Vit plus 1 half at squared. This hand, use x equals Vi squared minus Vi squared all over 2x. All over 2x. Say again? Acceleration is negative 7.63. Is the entire quantity at squared? Just the t. Good question, Paul. Take a look. If this whole quantity were being squared, you need parentheses. So this t is being squared. So I would do 5.5 squared, then multiply by the negative 7.63, then multiply by half. Okay? See what you get. checking this. It's, uh, it's a high correlation for the people that try in class and do well in these kind of problems on tests. Okay, make sure you try it. We're going to move next door in a second. Hold on. What did we get? Jeff, what did you get for yours? I got 115.59. That's what I got also. 115.59. This half the room, anybody verify that? 115.6. 115.6. Wonderful. Okay. So again, proving to us that it works either way. Are we clear on that? Okay. We still have 115.6 if you're rounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to do more of these, absolutely. Okay. So we still have two more examples to do. I'm not going to continue lecturing because I don't like to do that with two periods. I think it's kind of boring. We're going to move next door. So get your textbooks, bring them back. Okay, grab a seat next door, please. Clean up around before you leave.